Okay, our goal here is to have a nice, neat hole, and uh, we're going to show you how we recommend uh, that you do this. Uh, this is the metal plate, the self-stick plate that will go on uh, to the bottom. This is the underlayment, uh, so the underside of your layout, and the motor will just attach like that. There's a simple magnet, and you can move it around and adjust it. In the how-to video, we'll get into more detail about how that works. But right now, we want to talk about how to drill a nice, neat hole. Uh, so we can put the, the plug in to the hole and the crossing gate in. Lots of ways to do this. I mean, you could just take a big old hunkin' half-inch twist drill. Uh, what it's going to do is it's going to tear uh, the edges of the hole. So while if this is all you have and you have at least a half-inch uh, surface, okay, it'll work. But you'll have to clean up a little bit. What we recommend uh, more is what's called a Fortzner bit. Uh, and you can see that it has a, a little bit of a different uh, profile. And uh, what we want to do is drill about an eighth of an inch from the, from the bottom and then finish the hole from the top. And that way the two entry points to the surface of the plywood or whatever your strata is uh, will be clean. And then we'll just clean out the inside of the hole. Uh, in order to figure out the alignment of those two separately drilled holes, we're going to just drill a pilot hole. Now, the other thing that I recommend, uh, the advantage of doing this, is that if you have a lot of wires and things going on underneath your layout, drilling a small pilot hole like this will let you know you're in a safe place. Um, also, uh, the other thing to consider is the location of the uh, metal plate. Uh, because there's an orientation to the crossing, uh, the crossing has a slot on one side of the center of the, the hole. So here's the center and the slots on that side. So depending on which way you're going to face the crossing, whether you have a left hand or right hand facing crossing, uh, you need to consider that so that underneath the layout, the slot, oops, I almost lost that. The slot is aligned on, on the same side as the metal plate, as you can see in this example, right? So that would mean that that would be the way the crossing's going. All right, let's get to drilling the hole. Pretty simple. I just have a standard electric drill here, and I'm going to take and fasten the, the bit to it. And we're going to do it uh, right over here, and I'm just going to drill a simple pilot hole. Actually, let's do it the way we would do it on the layout. So this is the top side of the layout. Uh, we're going to drill a pilot hole, and that's all there is to it, okay? So now, the tricky part uh, is to get under the layout, go underneath the underside, and drill a little bit of that hole out. And you can see that it's punched, uh, punched through here, and what I'm going to do is just take the center and center it on that hole, and I'm going to drill a little bit of that All right, so I just got it started. And what we're gonna do is take some uh, regular sandpaper and clean up the edge. And now you can see I have a nice, neat hole, all right? I think I'm gonna do a little bit deeper than that. This is half inch. I wanna go down about an eighth of an inch. It looks like I'm about a sixteenth. There we go. All right, so that's nice and neat. And that's centered on the hole on top. And so all we have to do is, let's see if I can get around to the other side of this and drill the hole through. A little bit of rocking motion, not much pressure. Sometimes the, the bit will get a little clogged up and you can just wipe it off. I can see it. There we go. All right. So now, just with, like I said, with very little cleanup here, and likewise on the other side, I have a nice, neat hole for mounting my crossing gate. So that's the way it could, that works. So now that we have our hole drilling technique figured out, what we want to do is just uh, drill the four holes here. I'm going to remove these pieces of track and 
I'm going to just go through and uh, again drill the pilot holes where we marked from before. Okay, and also for my bench protection, I've, re I've made sure that my drill and the height of this, I won't go through the bench. All right, so just four, four pilot holes. Okay, and now I'm going to drill the starter holes for each of these four. Change the bit around. If you can see that, all right, and we'll just get. Deeper. Okay, let's clean this up a little bit. And I'm just gonna wipe this right onto the floor. Of course, your layout, you're gonna have to vacuum underneath, but here we go. And we'll just make really fast work of cleaning these out. Okay, and same thing. Okay, so we've got some nice neat holes now. Uh, they are going to be a little rough on the inside, and so I'm going to use this uh, file and just knock out some of the bits inside. And there we go. We are going to drill two more holes uh, for the detectors, but we, before we do this, uh, I want to show you that this is, uh, we want to test fit the crossing. Now, it should be snug, but not tight. Uh, there's a little, the wire there, so you just uh, very carefully put all of that in and slide the plug down into the hole. And it should, should fit snug, okay? Now, if you need to take it out, do not pull on the parts because you're, there's a very good chance you're going to break them. Simply use a screwdriver, flathead screwdriver, and pry it up just like that. And once that you get the plug part, be careful of the L shape in the wire, and we can pull that out. And you just test the, the other holes for fit, and you'll be all set to go. Now, before we go on too much further, uh, we're using half inch here, as I mentioned before. I want to show you that we also have the setup for three quarter inch. You can see that's much thicker. And we have the plug that's designed for three quarter inch. And then uh, as we discovered, 
through our survey, uh, there's a fair number of you have foam and other sources. Uh, and so we have a plug that's out for one inch foam and you can mount the uh, metal plate on, directly onto the foam if you like. If you have it thicker than that, that's fine. You'll need the extended uh, piano wire to make that work. Now, one of the things that we discovered in practicing for how to cut into the foam, I will just do a quickie there. So the Forstner bit that we showed you before is not the way to do this. Uh, these two holes here in this sample piece are, one is the, the twist drill and the other one's the Forstner drill, and it did a pretty bad job of just chewing it up. Uh, so that's not really great. So what we then did is we took this file and we've just poked it through. You could use a drill, I suppose, smaller drill to poke it through. And then we just filed the edges. Uh, first time we got it pretty close. And the second time we just started with a smaller hole and uh, it came out nice and neat. And then uh, on our final attempt, we got it just right. So just took a, a board and uh, practiced it a little bit, filed this out. And now the plug will fit very neatly into the foam. So uh, when you order, order the, the one inch for the one inch foam or three quarter inch for the three quarter inch and so forth. All right. Before we put the gate crossings in, and we're almost ready to do that, uh, we're going to drill a couple of holes for our, uh, this is HO, HO sensors, precision detectors, and they'll go here in this uh, sample sample system. So we'll be able to put our hand in front of the, the train over here and the gate crossings will close. Of course, you would locate these further down the track in either direction. Uh, you'd tie their signal wires together and connect them up to the signal controller. We'll show you that in a couple of minutes. Um, we have, uh, if you have the, if you purchase for, for any time after May 1st, you will have these small uh, plugs on your HO uh, precision detectors and what that allows us to do is to just drill a, a, a round hole and just pop these in. Uh, the original detectors had a square DuPont plug and you actually had to make a, a elongated slot and uh, well I made a lot of gate crossings and that I had to cut those slots in the box and uh, necessity is the mother of invention and I got tired of doing that so we got the plugs and actually, we couldn't get the plugs during COVID, so now we can, and so we've upgraded, uh, upgraded that. So I'm just going to drill a couple of simple holes here. I drilled a couple of uh, small holes, one eighth inch holes in the base, and then I put some double stick tape in, and I used an X-Acto just to cut out the center of the hole. And here is the sensor with the wire connected, and what we're going to do is run the wires through the sensor, set the sensor into the bracket, pretty straightforward, and then we're going to run this down through the hole. Just doing that, sort of show you what we're, what we're up to here, okay? And um, I'm going to leave, I'm going to take these off, uh, this, uh, there are two of them, one on each side. I'm not going to uh, pull the double stick tape off quite yet. I'm going to save this for the last step. I'm going to now switch over to installing the gate crossings, but I wanted to let you know, actually, this is going to face this way and the train goes by in the sensor and we'll set that up a little bit later, but that's, that's what the plan is. So during the construction of our sample layouts, uh, we've done quite a number of these, we decided that in order, rather than trying to fit this in and then discover it's too tight and then pulling this in and out of the hole to get the hole right, we're going to give you as part of the kit one of these plugs. It'll be a little bit different shape. So, uh, and the idea is that you can just insert it into the hole like this in each of the holes to make sure that the size of the hole uh, will fit. And then the idea is that you only have to do this once. So uh, we've done that with all of the holes, made sure they're set up. And now we're going to put in our first uh, gate crossing and just slide it down there, get the wires in and pop it in, get it set up. And there's the first one.
There's the second one. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to have these facing the camera. So uh, normally you would face th this would be facing that way. Uh, but so you can see all of the setup here. We're going to just have them all facing forward on this side of the demo and just pop that in. And one more. Okay, and now we'll just pop the track back on just for show. And we are ready to work on the underside. There's the, the gate and the wire arm, and we'll set that up for, for the rest of these as well. All right. So this is what our demo board looks like under the layout. Your under your layout will look similarly. Uh, the slot is on the left hand side and I've already fastened one of these uh, very thin uh, metal uh, pads and this is for the magnet. You'll notice that the location of the slot is off center. So in this case it's slightly further down from center. In this case it's slightly up from center. So align the edge of the plate on the far side of it. So uh, in this case, the whole idea is that the center of the slot is below the center of the hole. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it here rather than here or here. So just align it right in the center of that slot. It'll be uh, just slightly lower than this, the center there. And uh, just peel the backing off. For, for me with no fingernails, this is the hardest task. <laughs> there we go. All right, so I'm just going to put it, don't cover the hole. Uh, we may need to adjust the hole later. Just put it right about there. And this sticky stuff is pretty good. It'll hold on. And, uh, and that, that's all there is to that. So this one, uh, we're going to have to put it on this side. I noticed that I'm over the edge of the, the demo board because <laughs> of that. Uh, but that's fine because the motor will just fit inside there and we'll just keep an eye on it. Actually, let me see uh, if I can cut that. We decided not to cut this because we'll need the space for the magnet. On your layout, you won't have this problem uh, because your layout will be wider. So there's where that goes. And this last one will go on the left-hand side of that circle. So um, in a worst case, you could put it on the other side. There's enough clearance for the uh, wire to go around this rod, which is where the wires are fit into. Uh, but we'll do it this way for, for now. There is quite a bit of uh, sort of flexibility, I guess, built into this system, uh, both with the, uh, mag the magnet itself being able to slide around and with the piano wire. Uh, there, if the piano wire was on the other side, it never goes below the bottom of the pipe. So you could have the magnet, uh, sorry, the motor on the other side if you really needed to do it that way. That would work. And we're going to just do it this way uh, like that. Okay. The next step is to attach the motor. And as you can see, I'll move this in closely. There are three holes and they're further out, each of them is further out from the center, meaning that the distance that the, the hole will travel is longer and the motion for the gate can be adjusted accordingly by choosing one of the three holes. For our setup for this HO, we're going to use the outermost hole, which is the most amount of travel. Now, uh, once we configure this, the hole will not actually go to all the way to the bottom and you'll see that we'll fine tune where the gate uh, is set. So the first thing that we want to do is uh, we're going to hook up to our gate controller and the magnet is here and we've aligned so the hole is up there. Now how do you do that? Well on the controller you press three times and the motor will start to turn. You can see that right? And so the motor will just keep turning and turning and turning and eventually it will reach all the way to the top of the other side and in our gate controller uh, software pushing the button once stops or exit the mode so we're going to put it right there all right so the buttons at the top 
uh, sorry, the hole is at the top. And all you need to do to attach this, I'm going to pull the wire out a little bit, which lowers the gate just so I can get in there. And I'm going to put the hole, the, the uh, wire, piano wire in the hole and adjust it so that the wire is in the middle of the slot. All right, so just turn it around, make it square. And that is all there is to it. Let's go up here and you'll notice that the gate is in the up position. I've knocked over the uh, crossing uh, gate over here. We'll take care of that later. Um, and so to put it into manual mode, I'm going to press twice. Oh, one more thing. Let's connect up the lights to the other side of the controller. And I'm going to press the button twice. And there it goes. All right, no bell because we haven't hooked that up yet, but this is the, the motion. All right, now you notice that it didn't go all the way down. So this is the cool thing about how we set this up. You can adjust the gate by using this uh, adjustment screw up or down. And center is off, okay? So let's go back up and check the the center position. Make sure we're happy with that. Okay, and the motor runs a little bit, keeps running a little bit past when the gate arm is up. So I'm going to adjust it down a little bit. Oops, this way. There you go. Just see it right there. Just started to move. Okay, now I'm going to go to the bottom position, pressing it twice in manual mode. And see, now it's not far enough down, so we're going to have to adjust it down. So you do adjust the top one first, which I didn't do, and then you adjust the bottom one. So let's go through the whole cycle again, push it twice. And there it goes. And stops right there. That's good. All right, let's go down again and check that. And maybe a little bit more, just a tad more. There we go. There's a more extensive discussion about this adjusting of the gate in the how-to section, but I wanted to give you a sense of how that works. It's pretty simple. So that gate is already finished. We're done. Uh, and now I'm going to go through and install the motor and uh, configure each of the conf uh, gate controllers for each of the gates. Um, and then we will hook up, we'll test them. We'll just, I'll show you how that's working. And then we'll connect up all of their detect uh, lines. We'll install our detectors and then uh, test that out. And then the last thing that we'll do is add sound. I started to work on the other crossing gates and I went to this one next and I realized that it's a little bit loose. I'm pushing it from the plug. So what I'm going to do is show you the, the fix for this. So I, I like it to be loose. Uh, I don't want you to force the plug in there. Uh, so you know, shaving off the wood was the right idea, but we're going to just use uh, some plain old scotch tape and just wrap it around the plug and insert it back in. And now it's now it's firm. Remember to use a screwdriver to pry it out. Okay, don't pull on the unit because. Uh, you're very likely to break it. I've broken a few of these and I made them so I know where the weak points are and so forth. So just use the screwdriver. It's really simple. And uh, now we'll continue to wire up uh, the other gate crossings. So I'm working through this. Uh, in the, during the demo setup, I noticed that uh, this arm is not perfectly straight up. And I looked at the gear inside move the camera up a little bit and the gear is at the top of its transit and the magnet 
the, the motor is at the top. So I can't make it go higher with what I have. So the purpose of, of this discussion is to show you how to bend uh, a new piece of piano wire so that I get just a little bit more uh, vertical uh, push in the upward direction so that the gate is, is vertical like that. That's the resting spot. So my wire here is too short. Now, I took this wire from the first uh, crossing uh, to just test it and see what the length would be and just goes to show you how easy it is to take out uh, this this little guy here and we just can pop it out with here we go so I get the wire and just slide it out We'll do another close-up of that. And now the wire can come out. So that's the wire. I don't know if you can even see that. It's, there we go. Okay, so what I want to do is make another version of this little wire hook, uh, but I want it to be a little bit longer. So what I've done here is just on a piece of card paper is marked the locations of the two angles. And this this is the entire, uh, that's, that's the, the whole connection. <laughs> Very simple. I mean, we really, really tried uh, many, many different techniques, latching it in, all sorts of things. Uh, this is just works great. The distance of, of this is at the gate itself, and this is at the motor. And so what we want to do is bend a piece of wire that's just uh, about, <laughs> hard to say about, uh, a couple of widths of the wire longer so that when the motor is at the top, the arm of the gate is at the full extension. So you're supplied a couple of extra uh, wires, uh, piano wires, and the first cut, the first bend is pretty simple because it's just the smaller of the bend and we'll just put it down about there and just bend it at a 90 degree angle and that's all there is to it and that is just about right and that matches uh, maybe it's a little bit longer, but that's okay. It just matches right up there. Now, the next one that we need to match, all right, is we want it to be flat. And that's why we use the card so we can push the card back. And now I'm going to put this right about here. I'm going to make sure that the when I bend it, it's going to be at the same angle. See, this is pointing up. So I'm going to bend this at the same sharp angle, and that's all it is, okay? So there's the metal. Now, this will not fit down through the hole, so we will need to get some cutters. And I don't recommend this. I'll show you uh, what we've got in the cutter department in just a second. Okay, so here's the original piece of wire that we used in the number one gate, and here's a uh, little piece that we cut and bent. It's a little bit longer by about an eighth of an inch, uh, maybe yeah, about an eighth of an inch. And then this is the extended wire. We give you a little bit more. So there are cases where you can put this up in the gate and have the motor extend out. And in fact, when we reverse the motor uh, in the back, we may uh, in fact do that. Now, most of the time though, you wanna cut the wire down so that it's, your motor is, is close to the, uh, the pivot point. And uh, so what I learned in this is that this, these uh, clippers are extremely sharp. We use them for fine cutting. Uh, we use them for the 3D printing, cleaning them off. They're terrible at cutting wire, um, other than fine, you know, stranded, small, thin wire. This wire is too hard and I dinged it. So I thought, okay, the track cutters, that would be work. Uh, and guess what? All sorts of cuts in there too. So that wasn't the, the right tool. So we pulled out the uh, toolbox, and this is the channel lock uh, wire cutter, and it's a really good hardened steel, and this does the job just fine. We need to be about the same distance right there. Uh, give it a little bit more, and cuts it like butter, and it's beautiful. So that's, uh, that's what you want to use is uh, get yourself the channel locks. It'll save you a lot of uh, agony and pain and uh, frustration later. Okay, I've been working on this for about 20 minutes and I have all of the 
motors hooked up. Uh, the one thing I wanted to show you uh, early on, you I showed you me putting this little pad off, sticking out the side. Well, I also mentioned that you could reverse it. And because the rod where the wire is coming through is, is high enough, let's say, uh, the rod, uh, the uh, piano wire will fit over the top of it and won't get impeded. I just put a little scotch tape here to keep the wire out of the way and all of these wires. So I'm going to just flip this thing over and uh, hide the wires <laughs> a little bit behind and just give you a sense of what we've got going here. Okay, let's see. All right. So, all right. So let's, uh, now we're going to put it through its paces. All right. So now you can see that I've uh, uh, set up the, the whole system here. I have the power module, power going from the power module to each of the four gate controllers. I numbered them, one, two, three, four, and underneath the layout they're numbered. They are one, two, three, four. And uh, I have a white wire here connected to ground. It's the most left on the number one gate controller. And one of the features that we built into this is to cascade the trigger. And the reason I did that is for a couple of reasons. If you set this up for DCC, you can give this a switch address, and when this controller goes, uh, its respective gate will run. But I didn't want you to have to set up the, the address three times. So the output of the center one, what we used for latch, is output. It can run the bell, uh, which we'll set up in a couple of minutes, or it can just simultaneously be set to the detect on the other three. So I only have to trigger one to get all four of them to go. And uh, instead of connecting the detectors right away uh, to isolate and debug to make sure I've got everything working, I'm just going to simply short this to the detect from ground to the detect button. And no sound right now, but uh, you're going to see, uh, so let's turn the power on. You'll see all four of the controllers will go through their boot up sequence. The lights are off and uh, you're ready for this. So we're going to trigger uh, the gate as if it was the detectors. And I have the, the two of the gates set up for five second delay and the other two set up for the 10 second delay. Again, we talked about letting the cars pass as they go across. And so you can see how they're synchronized there. Nice smooth movement, all the, bell, the lights are blinking. Uh, and now I'm going to release what would be the detector the train has passed. I'm going to release that and the gates will go back up to their ready position. Fantastic. Isn't that fun? Okay, so let's, um, let's set up the sound so we get the full effect and we will put the detectors in. So we'll test the sound first. That's pretty straightforward. And then we will add the detectors last. All right, I hooked up the sound module. It's pretty simple. I just ran the power wire over to the power module. That's one connection. And then I just continued the daisy chain of the trigger wire uh, from the last gate controller to the input of this is the, the bell module. Uh, the sound module and the bell module, they look almost the same. The sound module has um, some more features for animation. And uh, so that's how that works. Let's pull this up a little bit closer. And let's trigger just like we did the last time. And let's see what happens. Now I have the bell sound down, turned down a little bit. Um, the volume is, uh, can be quite loud. And as soon as I release, the bell stops and all the gates come up. Wow, that's great. Okay, so last thing to do is to put the uh, precision detectors in and remove the signal uh, here and we'll be all set. And here's the completed unit all set up with the sensors, everything ready to go. Here's my train coming along, trips the circuit. And this is the entry into the crossing and then the exit closes afterwards as we talked about before. And then I'll pull this away, train goes by and the gates come up 
and we're ready for another cycle. Now I put the sound module in there. Um, we'll have a little fun right now. I have four sounds on the bell module. You can choose any one of the four. I'll pick the second bell so you can hear what that sounds like. And one more, which is kind of fun. There's no train here, but you can hear it coming. That is just way cool. All right, so what are all the parts to this? So here's, let's back up a little bit. And this is what we've been building today. So like we said before, the power module, the four gate controllers, and the sound module. And there's a variety of things that we wanna talk about. There's actually uh, the, the many functions that are available uh, on the gate controller. We've used a, a number of them today. If you want to know more detail how the setup, the fine-tuning of the gate speed, uh, the stopping and starting, what to do when the power goes out in the middle of the gates moving, and all of that will be included in a how-to video, and that'll be ready in a, in a day or so. But uh, uh, this is the, the setup, and I uh, hope you enjoyed that.